good morning good day and good evening i hope whenever this finds you that you are well and you can feel the love that i'm sending to you I'm going to be reading the seventh verse of change your thoughts change your life it is a book by dr wayne d wayne w dyer about living the wisdom of the Tao. so the subject for the um, seventh verse is living beyond ego. The seventh verse is heaven is eternal. The earth endures. What, why do heaven and earth last forever? They do not live for themselves only. This is the secret of their durability. For this reason, the sage puts himself last and so ends up ahead. He stays a witness to life, so he endures. Serve the needs of others, and all other needs will be fulfilled. Through selfless action, fulfillment, fulfillment is attained. Living beyond ego. The opening line of this seventh verse of the Tao Te Ching is a reminder that the Tao, the source of heaven and earth, is eternal. By extension, the original nature of life is everlasting and enduring. There is a quality that supports this durability, however, and that quality responds when we live from our Tao center rather than from our worldly ego center. Identifying exclusively with the physical, the physicality of life and basing our existence on acquiring and achieving things disregards our infinite nature and limits our awareness of Taunus. In such an infinite, wait, in such a finite system, big difference, it therefore seems logical to strive for possessions and accomplishments. Being civilized in most cultures primarily constitutes being consumed with attaining success in the acquisition of power and things, which supposedly will provide happiness and prevent unhappiness. The primary idea is of self, who is a separate being in a separate body with a name and with cultural and biological data that are similar in values and patri patriots patriotism, patriotism to others. The Tao, particularly in the seventh verse, is suggesting that we update those notions and choose to exist for more than ourselves or our tribe. That is, to radically change our thoughts in order to change our lives. Leitu says the secret of this in, inevit, inevitable nature in the eternal Tao is that it isn't identified with possessions or in asking anything of it, its endless creations. The Tao is giving machine, the Tao is a giving machine that never runs out of gifts to offer, yet it asks nothing in return. Because of this natural tendency to live for others, the Tao teaches that it can never die, giving an immortality than to go hand in hand. The sage who grasps the everlasting nature of the Tao has gone beyond false identification with the ego and instead has a living connection to the Tao. This person puts others first asking nothing in return and wholeheartedly serves. In this way, the sage lives the ultimate paradox of the Tao. By giving without asking, he attracts everything that he's capable of handling or needing. By putting himself last, the sage ends up ahead. By putting others before him, he endures just like the Tao. The sage emulates the natural philanthropy of the Tao and all of his needs are fulfilled in the process. 
The ego is a demanding force that never satisfied, that's never satisfied. It constantly requires that we seek more money, power, acquisitions, glory, and prestige to provide the fuel it thinks we must have. Living a Tao-centered life rather than an ego-centered one removes us from that rat race as it offers inner peace in satisfying fulfillment. This is what I believe the wisdom of this verse of the Tao Te Ching is saying for the 21st century. Make an attempt to reverse ego's hold on you by practicing the Tao's teaching to serve the need of others and all your own needs will be fulfilled. Generously thinking of and serving others will lead to matching your behaviors with the perpetual rhythm of the Tao. Then its powers will flow freely, leading to a fulfilling life. Ego wants the opposite, however. It is telling you to think of yourself first and get yours before someone else beats you to it. The main problem with listening to ego is that you're always caught in the trap of striving and never arriving. Thus, you can never feel complete. As you reach out in thoughts and behavior, behaviors, you activate loving energy, which is synonymous with giving. Put others ahead of you in as many ways as possible by affirming, I see the sacred invisible source of all in the eternal state of giving and asking nothing in return. I vow to be this too in my thoughts and behaviors. When you're tempted to focus on your personal success and defeats, shift your attention in that very moment to a less fortunate individual. You'll feel more connected to life as well as more satisfied than when you're dwelling on your own circumstances. Imagining what it would be like if you dismissed ego's hold on you. Serve others and watch how all that you give returns to you tenfold. The poet Havis expressed this attitude perfectly. Everyone is God speaking. Why not be polite and listen to him? Stop the chase and be a witness. The more you preserve, the more you pursue desires, the more they elude you. Try letting life come to you and begin to notice the clues that what you crave is on its way. You're in a constant state of receiving because of the ceaseless generosity of the eternal Tao. The air you breathe, the water you drink, the food you eat, the, sun, the sunshine that warms you, the nutrients that keep your body alive, and even the thoughts that fill your mind are all gifts from the eternal Tao. Stay appreciative of all that you receive, knowing that it flows from an all-providing source. Stop the chase and become a witness. Soothe your demanding habits by refusing to continue running anymore. By letting go, you let God, and even more significantly, you become more like God and less like the ego. With this lifetime practice of edging God out. Edging God out. Oh, ego, edging God out. <laughs> Oh, mercy me. You saw those wheels turn and I'm like, this doesn't, I don't, this just, I was like, this doesn't seem right. Like what? Ego. Edging God out. That is too funny. It's not funny, but I like it. It's funny. It took me so long to grasp it. But anyhow, moving on. <laughs> Do the Tao now. Be on the lookout for ego. Be on the lookout for ego demands from an entire day. Decide to diffuse as many of them as you can comfortably, perhaps by assigning them an intensity grade. Living beyond ego situations that are easy to accomplish get a low number, while those requests that are difficult to quell get a higher number. So what also 
So this is another kind of perspective on something that I already do in a way. So there is a author and teacher, Dr. Carolyn Leaf. She um, talks about being in the moment and with the, I kind of see like I, um, I can relate because I will try to stay in the moment and I will, if I'm thinking wrong, incorrectly, I guess in another perspective through this, through my ego, um, when I realize it, I stop and I say, thank you, Father, for bringing awareness to this incorrect thinking, right? And then whatever it may be, if I'm having a negative thought, I know the truth is this, etc. So that makes me think of that. This also, um, you know, I can relate to it in the parallels of, you know, this in the Bible and then also with yoga. Um, there is a type of yoga, which I can't think of right at this moment, of selfless giving. So, um, yep, that's what I got for today. I hope you enjoyed the reading and putting up with my speaker being broken <laughs> and digression at times. So, either way. Sending you lots of love and big hugs and blessings abundant to all. Be blessed and be a blessing. Know that I love you, but don't let me love you more than you love yourself. Till next time.